What is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new Fortnite guide video. I'm so excited to bring you guys this video. It's a compilation of all the hard work I've been doing to try to find the best guide possible for you guys to lower your input delay and boost FPS. So overall, I gotta say, if there's one video you'd wanna follow that is comprehensive and goes in depth on every single thing about lowering input delay, input lag, and also fixing response time, this is the video for it. This one will, uh, an accurate goal would be to get you around two milliseconds of input delay. A lot of people I know out there are still at like six, 10, even 15 millisecond delay, and they just can't quite get that extra bit down. This is probably the best guide for you. All these are things that I've learned over the course of a year, so some of them will be flashback clips from that time. They are all still working today, as I just optimized my PC with all these tips. Um, I'm surprised they're all still working, to be honest, because uh, over the past year, we've had a couple seasons, season five, six, seven, and eight, and then also now chapter one, season one all from the last year. And because I know this video will go on to assist you guys, if you guys are new to my channel, my name's Cameron. I do tons of Fortnite guides and how-to videos. If you guys wanna be part of the huge movement of my channel blowing up, uh, just like and subscribe, that's all I could ask for, it's free. I love you guys, take care. And for those of you that don't know, if you guys haven't done a whole lot of research on this, input delay is the time between actually hitting a physical button and it actually happening and showing on screen in the game. This can be the matter of milliseconds, but it is still crucial to have the lowest input delay possible because this means that you're gonna have less time between making an action and it appearing and happening. The first thing that I wanna cover for you guys is how to check your input delay. So when you actually load up a game, you'll notice in the top left, we already have our input delay. Well, up there in that corner, you can actually also get your response time or your input lag delay. So to get that showed up there, you have to jump into your settings. You have to scroll down. And you have to be on DX11 or DX12. Um, you can't be on performance mode to turn this on. Then all you simply need to do is make sure you have latency markers turned on. So what this is going to do is allow you to see latency on your computer. Um, it does say that you need required NVIDIA graphics card for this. So sorry AMD users can't check it this way you'll have to download a third-party software. After you got that turned on you'll need to go over here to your game UI settings Scroll down until you find latency debug stats. You'll need to turn that on and now it will show up in game. You just have to click apply and test. And there we go. So as you can see, it's in the top left. Now our input delay is actually pretty high. That's due to my recording software. It's due to me having a bunch of tabs open and also it's due to me not having anything optimized. So we're gonna see that fall down dramatically, but as you can see, it's pretty high. It's like 14, 15 milliseconds right now but we can get that down tremendously. First thing I'm gonna go ahead and cover is everything that'll lower your input delay without having to be on like PC or laptops. You could do this on a game console like Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox, whatever, it doesn't matter. All you need to simply do is go into your, um, your locker. I know this sounds crazy, but there's a select amount of skins, back blings, uh, pickaxes, and uh, wraps that can lower your input delay dramatically, which is amazing that this is this research was found out Hey guys current Cameron here So I'm just stopping the video here at this point So this was an old clip from a couple months ago But this really does boost your FPS and also saves your input delay and the reason being is it's uh, using less resources on your computer and also on your gaming console so like uh, Xbox, PS4, all those will actually have a lower input delay and uh, like a 5% FPS boost while using these tips. Um, I, I learned this personally from it's Jerrion's video, so shout out to him. All right, so we just got done optimizing our locker, so this is gonna lower our input delay. As you can see, we have a basic skin, basic pickaxe, basic glider, no back bling, no contrail, and this is gonna help a ton, and the reason for this, I'm just gonna talk this through. The skin doesn't have anything that really changes or flips besides maybe the hair, that's the only thing that has any bit of animation whatsoever. As you can see, there's nothing else that changes. There's no color flashings, there's no animations. It's just simplistic, right? You wanna find a skin that is simplistic like this because even one that has hair that flips like this one, for instance, her braids will move and that little rabbit thing that she has on her side there also moves around. Those things will actually 
Um, they're, they're more intensive to your graphics card. So this skin here would also be a bad example of one to use. As the lights do change, it has some glowing effects to it. This is going to draw resources and also slow down your PC a bit. So um, those are some of the examples I wanted to give you. An idea of another good one uh, would be Moxie. Moxie doesn't have anything that changes. There's no reactive colors. There's no like flipping hair. There's nothing that really moves around at all um, when you're playing a skin like this. So those are another good example of things you want to use and shoot for for lowering your input delay. How many times have you guys popped off in a Fortnite match, literally killing every single member in the entire lobby, sending them back to their families in coffins, and then all of a sudden your internet does this? Well, say goodbye to all that when you download No Ping and get your 14 day free trial. You guys can get the link down in the description below. An awesome software. Basically what it's gonna do is optimize your network and give you a faster connection to Epic Games, Fortnite servers, and hundreds of other awesome free online games so get your faster connection today download no ping down in the description i want to go ahead and share all the best fortnite settings after all the research i've done i found this is the best way to reduce your input delay and the good news is all these settings will also increase your fps so first off i recommend going to performance mode because that does tend to have the best um, performance increase um, direct x11 would be the second choice right so DirectX 11, also really good. It doesn't have all those extra ray tracing features like in DirectX 12. So I also recommend that one if you can't use performance mode or just don't like performance mode. But performance mode is the one I'm gonna be showing all the specific settings for. Um, so first off, I wanna share the ones that give you the most input delay. Motion blur and V-Sync. It's a must have to have these two off. They actually do have a performance cost and uh, what you get out of it is just not worth it. Sure, your game might look slightly smoother with motion blur, but it makes the overall performance and therefore quality of your gaming experience worse. So make sure these two are off, you'll, uh, you'll thank me later. If you have a, a higher end CPU, you'll wanna go with high or epic textures. Whoops. Um, higher epic if you have a higher end CPU. If you have a lower end CPU, just keep it on low for textures because it's really gonna make a, make a minimal difference. This is mostly for your CPU because textures are loaded through your, um, your CPU instead of your GPU, which is your graphics card. So if you have a high-end CPU, this evens out your gameplay experience to where it's not just GPU-centered and uses more CPU. So uh, high if you have a, I have a 3700X Ryzen, so I'm gonna keep this on high. For view, you want to have it on near if you want the lowest input delay. Um, you can have it up a bit, it'll just come with a slightly um, higher um, input delay, but I'm going to keep mine on near. 3D resolution only really matters much for uh, FPS. If you lower it down to like the 90% range, you actually get a little bit of an FPS boost, which is kind of nice. So I have mine at 95. Now um, the most important setting I think in all of these is up here. So actually, if you want the lowest input delay, you're gonna wanna go to full screen. My full screen is a little bugged, guys, okay? <laughs> um, what full screen does is it cuts out all the other tasks on your game or on your CPU or your computer. So when you're actually playing Fortnite, it's only gonna solely be focusing on Fortnite and it won't run any other background like apps or windows or anything and therefore it lowers your input delay so i highly recommend full screen if you're not using that uh, because it will actually give you slightly lower uh, input delay one last setting that's actually really important before we leave the fortnite settings and go over other settings actually if you go under your settings again go under the gear icon which is for your game you scroll all the way down to the bottom you can actually save about five to ten percent in FPS and input delay if you remove um, recording your replays. The reason being is it is actually using resources from your, your PC um, while you're playing Fortnite if you're recording those. So you'll actually have a better improvement in your gaming experience and in your input delay if you just turn them off. It does mean, unfortunately, you can't VOD review this way. So um, yeah, just be aware of that. Definitely worth it and something I wanted to mention. All right, guys, so now we're on the desktop screen, as you can see here. Now, the very utmost important thing that I'd recommend is making sure you don't have anything running in the background that's not supposed to be there. 
yeah i literally only have bluetooth devices so you can do that by clicking your uh your little navigation window here that shows all your icons and also by closing out any browsers or anything that you don't need while you're playing fortnite you can do that just by closing them down here in the dock uh, basically you want as little of things running as possible in order for Fortnite to get the lowest input delay because all those are system resource users and it will actually show up when you're uh, when you're playing the game so the next thing that I'd recommend is opening your epic games launcher and hear me out on this because this is actually super big I didn't even know about this until very recently once you have that open go down here in the bottom left to settings and then you'll see this option here where it says minimize to system tray you actually want to make sure this is unticked the reason being is whenever you close out an Epic Games Launcher, it'll fully close the Epic Games Launcher program. And actually, when you have Fortnite running, there's no need for the Epic Games Launcher running. It's just using more system resources, and it's just making your input delay higher. So by unticking Minimize System Tray, then whenever you close out of Epic Games, um, it'll fully close out the Epic Games Launcher while you're playing Fortnite. Of course, you'll need to relaunch it whenever you want to open Fortnite. But that's a nice little uh, tip that not a lot of people are aware about. Most people think you need your Epic Games Launcher running in order for Fortnite to, uh, to perform, but you don't. So guys, the very next thing we need to do is disable full screen optimization. Now, a lot of people don't know what this setting is or anything about it, so I'm just going to share this with you real quick. First of all, you need to open your Fortnite game folder. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Just open your file explorer. You're going to select this PC. You're going to select whichever drive has your apps on it. Mine is C drive. Then you're going to go to program files and then you'll select Epic Games, then Fortnite, then Fortnite game, then binaries, Win64. And here, finally, after six directories, you'll find Fortnite client Win64 shipping. So once you found this one here, Fortnite client Win64 shipping, this is the one with the largest storage, by the way. So you don't select these other ones that are the smaller size. They don't matter. On Windows 64 shipping, you're gonna right click it, go down here to properties at the bottom, and then you're gonna select compatibility up here in the top uh, middle. And then you'll see a few options here. Now there's two things that we should do here. We should run this program as administrator. This gives most resources to Fortnite. Also, you'll wanna disable full screen optimizations because for some reason, um, if you don't do this, Windows 10 will add VSync and it adds input delay to the app whenever you're running it. So make sure you disable full screen optimizations. Then you're going to want to click here where it says change high DPI settings. And you'll see an option down here where it says override high DPI scaling behavior. This does lower input delay by a bit as well. So you'll check this little uh, check mark here and you can just leave it on application. Once you do all that, just hit OK and then you'll need to hit apply down here in the bottom right. With just making those few changes here, it's gonna give you a higher FPS and also a lower input delay, which is fantastic. All right, so we're almost about done, guys. Congrats to everybody who's made it this far. You guys have gone through like 20 tips already. Um, I got a few more tips coming up. They're just some Windows 10 tweaks that'll just give you a little bit less input delay and really just limit the amount of processes going on in the background. Uh, so that way Fortnite runs a little smoother. To make sure your PC is on game mode, um, there's actually a setting for that in Windows 10. A lot of people know about this, but some people don't. So you have to just search game mode and Windows 10 has this game mode that you have to turn on here. By default, if you've never done this before, it is off. So you need to turn this back on. And really that's the only thing you need to do. It'll optimize your PC for play. So it uses more uh, resources to your game, such as Fortnite while you're playing, which is great. All right guys, once we have that done, we're gonna go down to the search bar yet again. We're gonna type in graphics and open up the graphics settings. So that's what you see here. If you have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, turn that on. It says right here, reduces latency and improves performance. AKA, that is lowering your input delay. So again, you'll need to turn this on. And if you, if you do have it available, some PCs won't have this option and that's okay. Just skip the step for now. Uh, you'll have to restart the PC once you turn this on. But this is the thing that everybody should have. It's this option for graphics performance preference. You'll notice Fortnite is listed here under high performance. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and remove it. So to, to find Fortnite, you have to open up this file 
location here. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you the file location for where you need to go. First, we're going to start off on this PC, which everybody has this. We need to select the drive that you have Fortnite on, which is my local C drive. We're going to go under Program Files, which is where all your apps are, and we're going to double click on Epic Games. We're going to click on Fortnite, then we're going to click on uh, Fortnite Game, and then Binaries, Win64. And here you'll see three Fortnite clients. You need to click on the largest one, which is this one. It's 160,000 kilobits. Uh, so we double click on, on that one and then it'll add it into this window here. So now you have some options. And if you click options here, we wanna go ahead and set this to high performance. And then you just click save. And then you're good to go, man. This is gonna optimize it for high performance and it can lower your input delay, which is great. All right, guys, so moving right along, this next setting is gonna disable your high precision event timer, which is just a fancy way of saying that your clicks and actions on your keyboard will actually be delayed if there's a timer set. So I'll show you guys how to disable that. It's actually really easy. First thing you're gonna do is come down here to the search icon, type in device manager. You get this option here. So once you have this pulled up, we're gonna go under system devices and we're gonna look for high precision event timer. And really that's it, it's just under system devices, high precision event timer. So yeah, once you actually find it here, all you need to do is just right click on it and you'll get this option here to disable device. So we're just gonna go ahead and disable it. You'll get this extra window that it will stop the functioning of it, which is fine. We can always re-enable it if anything happens. So we'll just hit yes. All right guys, so all you need to do for this step is come down here to the search bar. We're gonna type in power and it'll bring up power and sleep settings. Click on that one. Once you have that pulled up, you're gonna actually have to go under additional power settings. And then once you click on that, it's as simple as just selecting whichever one says high performance. This will favor performance, but may use more energy. So careful alert uh, laptop users. If you're on a laptop, it will use your battery more intensively. So make sure you have it charging uh, while you're playing Fortnite and stuff like that. So, all right, and that's the video we got for you guys. I really hope that you guys enjoyed these tips and that they gave you a huge performance boost. When I first did these tips, I couldn't believe how much it saved in resources on my PC and really helped optimize it. So I hope it did the same for you guys. Let me know if you guys did get down to two milliseconds of input delay. That's about the best that you'll ever see anywhere, even competitive players using only like two milliseconds. So uh, yeah, that's it guys. I hope it helped out and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out for now.